listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree. And I'm Rachel. We get to talk about food today, which is always super duper exciting because all of us love food and these episodes keep getting longer and longer, but I don't think anybody is complaining about that because food is just great. And when are we never not talking about food? It's true. It's always about food. Today is a little bit different though. Normally, you know, there's a poll and we do something very structured with lots of science behind it. We threw all of that out the window this time because why not? It's 2020. So we are introducing the Iron Ladle Challenge in the Lutheran Ladies Lounge, which we're all really excited about. So this is one where we present an ingredient and then we all make something different and super fun. So today is the Iron Ladle Challenge for Cranberries. And I am really excited about this one. Erin, take us away. Well, let me tell you, cranberries and I go way back. When I was in college, my grandfather and I, who is, he's now, he's now with the Lord, but he is, was a Wisconsin boy to his heart uh, from, from the beginning. And he and I used to, he would tell me stories about cranberry bogs in Wisconsin and how it was his dream to one day own a cranberry bog in Wisconsin. And I thought this was amazing. I was like, you'd need a wetsuit. It's kind of chilly, right? If you're going to be working in the bog, you'd need a wetsuit. And so we imagined wearing scuba diving gear, paddling our way through the cranberry bog in Wisconsin. (laughs) Anyway, cranberries. I have a warm spot in my heart because of granddad. Good old granddad. Cranberries are one of those fruits it's it's a sour fruit right Mm. you don't you Mm -hmm. don't eat cranberries straight except i decided i want to come as close as i could to eating them straight (laughs) (laughs) and i've also like i'm in the time of year where even though even this year it's not like i'm that busy and yet i don't I don't know. I did not want to actually have to devote a lot of time to this. I've got a lot. I've got a big project going on at work. And so I didn't have a lot of time that I was going to be able to throw at making a really involved recipe. And I thought to myself, you know what I've always wanted to try are those sugared cranberries. (gasps) Oh, and let me tell you, this is the easiest thing in the world, and it looks super impressive. Wow, (laughs) super impressive! So, you just get raw cranberries, you coat them in a little bit of simple syrup, let them dry so that they're just sort of sticky, and then roll them in sugar, and that's it. What? And they look Amazing, and they taste delicious. They are not too sour. The sugar that you put on the outside of them—I was just eating these like candy. You it's just like heart candy. That's it. By the handful, just like popping them in. You could how and and honestly, they would look really impressive at a party in yeah. A, the on, way you like just... next to your cheese your cheese tray, oh, put a yeah. sugar cranberry bowl. Yeah. The way you describe them makes it sound like something I've seen next to the silk flowers at like Michael's. Exactly. <laughs> they, they, they look fake like that. Um, so I decided to try. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. We'll have pictures. But I decided I was like, I bet these would also be good on a little cream cheese on a cracker. Oh, so wow. That's I, taste. I already tasted them just straight and they're fantastic. Hmm. And guys, literally, this is a five minute, super impressive thing that you could bring out if you have, if you actually have some people over, put it in, you know, a a few little bowls, you got some almonds, you got some olives, and you got some sugared cranberries. Christmas charcuterie. That's all you need. So I decided to test out putting it on a little smear of cream, cream cheese on a cracker and then putting the little cranberries on top. Mm. And I'm going to taste it right now and see if, if it works. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I know. <laughs> yes. You're rolling your eyes like in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> Here, 
is, I mean, it's hard to go wrong. Cream mm -hmm. cheese is going to, it's the perfect carrier method for almost anything. Yeah. It's but true. this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think you could also use this as a garnish. So say, uh, again, we're thinking about holiday saving time. So say you get yourself a store-bought cheesecake. Put yeah, a yeah. piece on top. Voila, it looks gourmet. And it tastes fantastic. Or like a and actual again, cake. You've spent five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I I chose to go the the super super easy route with this, but I am not at all disappointed. And these are amazing, and they're going to be a regular feature in the time of year. When that's the one thing they do need to be fresh cranberries. Mm -hmm. frozen will not work because they'll have lost their the firmness that they have when they're raw that'll that'll go away once they've frozen so you do need fresh cranberries which means there's only certain times a year when you can actually bring this out but november and december are you should have no trouble finding fresh cranberries mm -hmm. in the store highly recommend i actually had simple syrup already in my fridge because i like to make cocktails these would be a great <laughs> little garnish for a cocktail, too. Just stick one of these on a toothpick, lay it on top of your little cocktail. Again, super fancy, but ridiculously easy. So tell me about the cranberry dishes that you guys decided to make. I know we took this in a lot of different directions, which is ideal for this time of year. So let's let's hear it. Rachel! Okay, I guess it's appropriate since I made a salad and we need to have the salad before the dessert. Second course. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron has provided the appetizer and I have the salad. I got this recipe. This is full disclosure. This is a salad that I make at least once every week or two at our house, but it didn't start out that way. I got the recipe from my brother's mother-in-law who makes it as a special Christmas salad. But then I tweaked it and made it my own. And we like it so much that we have it a little bit more often than Christmas. <laughs> this, Christmas was, every week. this was actually also the kale salad or a version of the kale salad that uh, was featured in my old Lutheran Witness article on potlucks. What was it called? Heavenly Hot Dish or something like that. Yeah, I remember that. That was a good one. That was a good one. So I, I mentioned this is a potluck staple of mine, too. So it's really it works for the holidays. You'll see in the pictures, the salad basically looks like a trimmed Christmas tree, um, but it's edible. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a favorite. So the recipe, as it was given me, I'll give you that first, because if you are an, I am a kale lover. I keep kale in my fridge nearly all the time. I have some in my garden I picked tonight. I didn't have enough to make the whole salad kale, so I had a mixture of store-bought and garden pit, garden fresh kale. I love mm. kale. Not everybody does. Some people, I have it on good authority, think kale is a weed. Huh. They are wrong. A wild but it, weed. But it takes all types. <laughs> so the recipe I was given is with baby spinach instead. So you start with a baby spinach, and then you make a simple dressing with olive oil, balsamic vinegar, stone ground mustard, a little salt, a little pepper, toss your baby spinach. And then I believe the original recipe calls for cranberries, pine nuts, and gorgonzola cheese mm. crumbled over the top. Very delicious. I like kale better than spinach because it holds up better. Leftovers are way better with kale. Yeah. And then also I'm too cheap for pine nuts or gorgonzola most of the time. <laughs> so here is the Rachel Bomberger everyday version of this Christmas salad. So you start with a, a heaping bowl of kale. Uh, you're going to want to pull the stems out because no one wants to eat the stems and just tear it as you pull it off the stem into sort of bite-sized pieces. You're going to have a big fluffy bowl of kale. For me, the trick to eating kale in a salad is massaging it with baby oil before... Not baby oil. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> There's your out, <own>, Kate. <laughs> Do not massage with baby oil. It's probably poisonous. <laughs> massage the kale 
it out with about a tablespoon of olive oil <laughs> before you do anything else to it. And this will soften the kale and make it just, it has a really nice mouthfeel. And it also adds a little bit of additional sort of nutritional heartiness to the salad so that you need less of the rest of the meal to go with it. Mm. So you're going to massage your kale and that's going to reduce it just a little bit. So if you've got a heaping bowl to start with, you should have a nice bowl after that. I like to then make my dressing next. And I put it in, again, my favorite way to make salad dressing is in a, in a jelly jar. Add all the ingredients, put the lid on tight, and then shake, shake, shake. <laughs> so if I've already used a tablespoon of olive oil in the kale, I'm probably going to put another, oh, one to two tablespoons of olive oil in for the dressing. Two tablespoons of balsamic. This is approximate. I'm an eyeball person. So I just mm -hmm. have to pay really close attention if I'm going to share the recipe. About two tablespoons of balsamic, half a teaspoon of stone ground mustard. You want the good stuff here. Mm. I like at this point because I like a slightly sweeter dressing. I'm more of a French than a ranch person. I add about a teaspoon of honey as well. Mm. So that honey mm. stone ground mustard um, mm -hmm. goes really nicely. Dash of salt, some fresh cracked black pepper. Put your lid on. Shake, shake, shake. Put it all over your kale, toss the kale, and now you're ready for your toppings. So you're going to want a handful of, a generous handful, <laughs> if you're me, of <laughs> dried cranberries. Mm. I still have never, this is totally an aside, I still have never ever cooked with fresh cranberries. I need to do this. So if you want to make me forfeit the challenge, because I use craisins instead of cranberries, you can do that. But this is a great salad. You should try it anyway. So generous handful of dried cranberries. Uh, I use a handful then of uh, sunflower seeds, the roasted salted kind, mm. cheaper than pine nuts. Um, feta cheese crumbles, a little cheaper than gorgonzola, mm -hmm. but just about as good. Mm -hmm. And then what really for me makes this salad pop is that I will take a small handful of either sliced or slivered almonds Mm. Stick them in a tiny skillet with a little olive oil and toast mm. them up for five or ten minutes. Watch so you don't burn. It will make your kitchen smell like burnt popcorn if you overdo your almonds. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, just sprinkle the almonds on top. So that's it. Kale, dressing, cranberries, feta, sunflower seeds, almonds. You can substitute in other things as well. Um, I have made this salad in the summertime with fresh cherries instead of mm. dried cranberries Ooh. also really good yeah but that sounds this is, awesome this is a bomberger family favorite and mm. i am i'm happy to happy to share the recipe because we do eat it all the time we need to normalize salads i feel like i yes. agree i agree i Honestly. think we and they're so, they're so delicious. They're so beautiful. They're so healthy. Yeah. And the nice thing wrong. about the kale salad is that you're right. It is going to be a sturdier one. Yep. Yeah. So some salads aren't, it's harder to make them in advance and mm -hmm. have them actually mm -hmm. hold up as over, over, over any real length of time, they start wilting really quickly. Right. So I can see why this would also be a great potluck salad because it would it would hold up during the whole you can make it the night before and still bring it the day of or you can even just probably dress it once you get to get to church but it's not going to wilt and become that really limp salad that yeah. Yeah, starts Ugh. losing its appeal on the potluck table mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> And the kale, yeah, if you are going to make this with baby spinach, do like my brother's mother-in-law does. Take all the ingredients to the Christmas party separately and put it together yep. right before you serve it. That the kale, you could maybe make it all up and cover it with saran wrap. It is mm -hmm. not quite as good the second day, but if you're eating it within the first few hours that it's been made, you won't tell the difference. If you um, even have leftovers. Right. Yeah. Yeah, which we aren't going to have tonight. <laughs> but the the kale, and just while I'm on my kale lady podium here, <laughs> it's so rich in iron, in fiber, in you know good pro, good vitamins and minerals and all of that. Really, really, it's it's like 
lettuce on steroids when it comes to nutritional value. <laughs> Maybe next iron ladle challenge, we'll have to use kale and oh, hate everyone will hate us. <laughs> please do. I am there for that. <laughs> I, mean, I, I will not do it, but <laughs> if, if you don't yet like kale, you just haven't had the right recipe yet. I don't That's actually think I've eaten kale. I fry it all, pan fry it all the time. Oh, good. And, and put it in omelets uh -huh. and frittatas. Uh huh. Yep. Mm -hmm. I feel like you can make chips out of it. It's not too bad. Yes. Yeah. Kale chips yeah. are amazing. Mm -hmm. We're giving away all our kale recipes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It wouldn't be a challenge if, <laughs> if we didn't have to come up with something creative. <laughs> but this, right. this challenge is all cranberries, and the cranberries really give this a nice little sweet tartness to sort of offset. I will, I will grant you, kale can be a little bit bitter sometimes, mm -hmm. but you pair it with the salty feta, with mm -hmm. the you know buttery almonds and the the sweet, tangy cranberries, and they all just go together so nicely. Mm. Christmas that colors sounds... and everything. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It sounds beautiful, and honestly, it sounds delicious. I wish that were what I was eating for supper tonight, but sadly, I ate my kale last night, so <laughs> I'm out at the moment. <laughs> Is this your dinner tonight, Rachel? It was part of dinner. We had uh, shepherd's pie and... Ooh. Green peas and kale salad. So we're actually having a salad tonight, and it's almost identical, except it's romaine and dried cranberries and almonds mm. and chicken and roasted butternut squash. Yeah, so. and you can you can do this the Christmas Gosh. salad recipe with romaine too. I have done it in a pinch; doesn't have as much flavor, but yeah, it's, it's good, nice and crispy. It's mm -hmm. salad night, y'all. Love salad. Hashtag normalized salad. I like it. <laughs> Hashtag Next amen brie. Right. <laughs> Blind squirrel finds an acorn every once in a while. <laughs> well, Sarah, tell us about your cranberry challenge because you always get extra creative with our cooking challenges because you've got your, your dietary restrictions. So I want to hear you were pretty excited about this one. Super excited. I have a huge love of cranberries. Mm. They're one of the few fruits out of like three maybe that I can eat without any reaction basically ever. So I eat them all the time. The snack I had before we recorded was raw almonds and dried cranberries and salt. Uh, we're having cranberries in our salad tonight for dinner. So yes, I was super excited about this one because I have a huge love of cranberries. So I actually didn't have to get really creative with this one this time because I found a recipe that I really didn't have to alter almost at all, which is yes. crazy and awesome. So a while ago, I wanted to find a cranberry cookie recipe. When we were first talking about doing this episode, I really wanted to make cranberry cookies because I knew cranberry season was coming. So I actually found a recipe from the simple veganista and before you snub your nose at vegan cookies let me tell you brie <laughs> dude i've had some excellent vegan cupcakes i can't even be mad at you let me tell you these mm. cookies are legit if if you didn't know they were vegan you wouldn't be able to tell they're that good and i've made them i think three times in the last month i think <laughs> i'm losing track of that's a lot for a cookie recipe yeah I just, I run out and I just make another batch because they're that good. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. They're amazing. And my husband, who can eat anything in the world, loves them too. So that's like the husband stamp of approval yeah. that, that they're amazing. So this is from the, the Simple Veganista. I only had to alter one ingredient, which was the sweetener. So these, these use fine ground almond flour which Bob's Red Mill has it. I get mine from Trader Joe's. There's probably other places you can get it. The fine ground, I think, is the is the magic ingredient in these that mm. it makes the texture. They're they're mm -hmm. the like the perfect spongy, a really dense spongy texture when when you make them. And I think so it's that fine ground. It's more like a pastry flour than an all purpose flour. Probably. Honestly, it's been so long since I've used regular flour. I don't even know <laughs> what the texture is like. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, it's it's a it's denser. It's it's I think the fine ground makes it probably about the same consistency as regular flour, but it's not mm. going to act the same when you cook with it, obviously, because it's a nut. So the first time I did these, I was still making my own almond meal which was a lot coarser and they were, they were good, but they didn't have that texture that I got when I used the fine ground almond flour. So that like huge props for fine ground flour. It's amazing. It was kind of life changing when I, when I made it. Okay. So yes, I got to know, anybody have any idea how they prevent fine ground almond flour from turning into almond butter? Like normally when you grind up nuts, it starts turning into butter. How do they do that? Do you know? I don't know. And it's kind of magic. I'm sure. I mean, there must be some process. I can't make it at home. Chemical. I'm positive. (laughs) Look at the very end of the ingredients list. It's only raw almonds. Blanched almonds. They're blanched. Oh. They must suck the oil out or something. I don't know. It's magic. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll just we write, a, write a letter we'll to Bob's Wonder and the write a letter to Bob's Red Mill and ask. Okay. This is probably okay, made curious. from almonds after they take the almond milk out and sell it separately. <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe. I do not think that's what it is. <laughs> I do not think that's almond what dust. it is. Almond <laughs> dust. It's pretty much is almond dust. Anyway, it's basically okay. almond. So, dust. So fine ground almond flour. The recipe calls for maple syrup because it's vegan. Mm. I swapped that out for honey because I don't do maple syrup. I only do honey. Swapped it out one for one. Works totally fine. If you're actually going for the vegan recipe, you want to use maple syrup instead of honey because honey isn't vegan. But either one works fine. It probably gives it a little different flavor too. A really good flavor, I'm guessing. But olive oil, which is always a surprising ingredient in cookies for me. But it works really, really well in these. And I used it for my pie crust for our last recipe episode, and it worked really well in that too. You do want to find an olive oil that has a a lighter flavor to it. Not all olive oils are created equally, which is awesome because some of them are really spicy and awesome, but you probably don't want a spicy one for cookies unless that's what you're going for. But Some olive oils actually taste like olives. And you want to avoid those. (laughs) Yeah, like Greek and Spanish generally have a really strong flavor, which is fantastic for like savory cooking. Probably not so great for cookies. We have a Sicilian one that we're using right now that has a really mild flavor and it it works really well. But go to like an olive oil tasting and just have some fun with olive oil. I love olive oil. Anyway, so olive oil, uh, vanilla, of course, lots of vanilla. Mm. (laughs) Salt. I use Celtic salt. It's my favorite salt in the world. Any salt will work. If you have your own favorite salt, you can use your favorite salt. Slivered almonds to you crush them up and then you roll the the cookie balls in them. And jam, of course. Mm. These are these are thumb I, did I even tell you what kind of cookies these are? These are <laughs> these are cranberry thumbprint cookies. Yes. I'm so nice. excited. I forgot to tell you. The best cranberry kind. Um, print cookies. So you have jam to put in the middle. Now I made my own cranberry jam because I don't do store bought stuff that comes in jars and boxes and things generally. So, and I love fresh cranberries and they're everywhere right now. So my cranberry jam recipe, some people were asking me, I use three quarter cup of water with the cranberries, cook them until they start popping over medium heat and then three quarter cup of honey, pour that in, stir it around, reduce the heat, let it simmer for a while <laughs> and, <laughs> until it starts thickening up a little bit and the cranberries are all popped and everything and then you turn the heat off let it cool for a while and then it'll thicken up in the fridge super easy really delicious i love it so, so that's cool. the jam that i used so it's a really easy recipe you just mix the dough together form it into tablespoon sized balls which i discovered the first time i'm really bad at estimating things and i just like a tablespoon i like do a rounded tablespoon. It's close enough, right? Yeah. Except my first batch of these cookies were like triple the size they should have been. <laughs> Ain't so nothing was wrong cookies. with that. <laughs> it was fine, but they were huge. So the last couple of times I was, I actually measured like real tablespoons. It worked out a lot better. <laughs> the ratio of cookie to jam was much better. Mm-hmm. When the cookies okay. were proper size. So tablespoon balls, you roll them in the, the crushed nuts and you put them, you lay them out on the pan, put your thumbprint in them, which I'm still learning my thumbprint technique. They all turn out lopsided. And then you dump your uh, your jam 
in each one. It's supposed to be like an eighth of a tablespoon, but I way overdo it every time because extra jam. Why not? Extra jam is amazing. Throw them in the oven for about 15 minutes at 350 and until like they get nice and golden and brown. Mm. And then they're done and you can eat them and they're so good. And there's a few ways to like to modify the recipe if you need to modify stuff. There's some like spices you could put in them if you want to use like cardamom or cinnamon or or your f- whatever fun spices or any kind of jam. I bet these would be good with almond extract anything. instead of vanilla. Almond extract would probably be amazing. Yeah. Hmm. So I love experimenting with recipes, but I didn't have to with this one, which is beautiful. I could use it almost straight up. So thank you, Simple Veganista. <laughs> Made my life so much easier. <laughs> and I've, I've had these so many times. So I didn't actually make any more for tonight because I just finished my last batch yesterday and I need to like take a break from them. For a <laughs> I still have like half a bowl of cranberry jam because every time I run out of cranberry jam, I just make more the same day that I run out. <laughs> so I got to like slow down my cranberry roll right now. <laughs> Well, but you know what? There's only so long. Although I guess you could use frozen cranberries for these. You could, yeah, yeah. I'm. You could. I mean, you could store. There's store bought stuff too. It wouldn't be as good, I don't think, unless you yeah. love the like jelly cranberries. I, you could probably use that. But yeah, you could use frozen. Why not? Yeah. Well, yeah. that mean I was gonna say. I mean, there's only t- two months a year where you're gonna enjoy these cookies but you, since it's frozen cranberries are an option you can enjoy these all year round also the first batch or first or second batch of cranberry jam that i made back in thanksgiving is currently frozen in our freezer so nice. i have cranberry jam Emergency <laughs> jam. i want to just <laughs> rewind for a minute and ask what are the other two fruits you can eat blueberries and apples but i have to be careful with them i can't have them all the time okay okay yikes so there you go there's there's my cranberry Yum. cookie thumbprint cookie addition to our what's turning out to be a really nice cranberry meal yes. <laughs> it really is we've got an appetizer a dessert we've got a salad brie what are you bringing to our progressive dinner <laughs> well i hope you're all thirsty yeah <laughs> i am And this could really be at any point in the meal, whether it's your appetizer or your dinner or your digestif, if you will. (laughs) Y'all know that, that I love to party and have a good time. But what you might not know, some of you know this, what you might not know is I am not a big drinker of alcohol. I just think it tastes gross it's not like a it's not like a moral thing or whatever like it's just i don't like the taste of alcohol so we're while we're on the topic of normalizing salads can we please normalize non-alcoholic mixed beverages slash mocktails slash virgin variations of alcoholic beverages because i am i am riding that train real hard right now hashtag normalize mocktails i don't think we'll use hashtag normalize virgin (laughs) (laughs) that's a different conversation (laughs) we're entering well usually at this time of year we're entering a season of parties and punches and drinks and just celebrating and even though you probably shouldn't be, you know, decking the halls three feet apart from somebody this year every weekend, I think you can still still allow some festiveness to come into your life a little bit. So what I made, also kind of out of the need to do something quick and easy, is I made <laughs> a cranberry ginger mocktail. What? In oh, fact, that sounds amazing. I'm gonna name it. I'm naming it right now. Are you ready? Oh, yes. yes. This is. I'm gonna call it the Mary Cran Ginger Mocktail. I thought you were gonna <laughs> name it the the Cringer. <laughs> oh. Yes. Yes. Cut <laughs> this. Cringer. I'm gonna name it. Ready? Start over. <laughs> I'm gonna name it. Are you ready for this? <laughs> I'm calling it the Cringer. i love it perfect this is this is a recipe that i actually modified from the speckled palette.com okay this 
You may think of a mocktail as like a wussy beverage, but let me just tell you that when, once I explain the recipe to you, it is by no means a wussy beverage. And in fact, I have a few suggestions for ways that you can tone it down a little bit or a lot, depending <laughs> on what your palate is. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do is make a rimmer for your beverage. And what they suggest for your, your beverage rim is orange sugar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Huh. Basically never heard what of that, that is, is you just, you pour out your sugar. I used that turbinado sugar. I was kind of upset because it wasn't like white sugar, but once I rimmed it, it looked like a nice, like golden festive rim around the, around okay. the glass. Uh -huh. So basically all you do is you, you take a, a little plate and just pour some turbinado sugar out, flatten it out, take a zester and zest some orange peel into it and just kind of let it get all mingled together. And then on another plate, you're going to want to squeeze the juice, some sort of citrus fruit juice. I, I purchased a blood orange and a navel orange, the blood orange. Cause I, I like the color of the interior mm -hmm. and the navel orange had like a really deep orange skin color. And I really liked mm -hmm. that. So I grabbed one of those too. I also grabbed a pomegranate and a star fruit for my little garnishes. Okay. Nice. So basically what you do is you take the glass that you're going to be serving the beverage in. You flip it upside down onto the plate where you've squeezed your orange juice or your lemon juice or whatever. You use lime, whatever you want to do. Then you take it and you transfer it immediately to where your orange sugar is. You kind of twist it around a little bit, kind of move the sugar around a bit with the rim of the glass. You flip it over. Voila. You're, you look like a profesh mixologist. Like if this <laughs> doesn't work for you, your job or whatever, you could, you could just rim beverages for the rest of your life and it would be, <laughs> it would be fine. Right. Then what you do is you take ice, I, the amount to your liking, and then, it is a one to two ratio of cranberry juice, not cocktail, the pure, uh, no sugar added cranberry juice to ginger beer. So in this Ooh. recipe, it calls for two ounces of unsweetened pure cranberry juice to four ounces of ginger beer. I love ginger beer. And if you've tried pure unsweetened cranberry juice, and ginger beer, either together or separately, those are two tremendously strong tasting beverages. <laughs> I have only ever had pure cranberry juice medicinally. <laughs> so yeah, it is, it is tremendously potent. The sugar rim definitely helps with cutting that acidity as well as the spiciness of the ginger beer. Um, what I ended up doing was taking some of the orange juice that I had left over and squeezing some of that into the beverage as well. And then basically I just, I garnished it with an orange slice. You could use star fruit slices, especially kind of festive end of, end of the year, Christmas time. I also garnished it with some pomegranate seeds. So you just have a little mm. fun, like if you are having a party at some point in your life, have a little like cringer garnish bar for these things. And it's just really fun and really kind of neat. If you wanted to modify it a little bit, I honestly probably would. You can always do a ginger ale, which is mm -hmm. a little, well, a lot more mild than, mm -hmm. than a ginger beer. True. Um, you yeah. could use a cranberry juice cocktail instead of pure unsweetened cranberry juice. But if you're a fan of those flavors and want to give it a go before diluting it, it, it's nice. Like it's, it's just tremendously strong. And I think that it's a very appropriate sort of mocktail that you can drink and still feel like an adult. Yes. Because it's just very strong and very mature and it, kids probably won't like it basically. No, you would not give that to a kid. <laughs> definitely don't give it to a kid. You give them a modified, like a ginger ale cranberry juice cocktail version would probably be better suited for that. 
That is so, yeah. I, I love this because I know I have had only limited seasons in my adult life where I've gone without drinking alcoholic beverages, notably my four children's pregnancies. <laughs> but I have it on good authority from people who struggle with alcohol problem drinking that the holidays are hard because mm-hmm. everyone's drinking special beverages. And what do you have? But it's so hard to find a drink that makes you feel like a grown up. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many times at a wedding reception while pregnant, I would order a club soda with lime because it was the only thing that made me feel somewhat older than eight years old. Um, <laughs> so, but this sounds there. like it would, it would, it would fit the bill. And of course, ginger and cranberry both have excellent health benefits. Yep. We, we know that cranberry is good for certain certain kinds of health um but ginger <laughs> is it's anti-inflammatory and apparently good for helping with weight loss and we could all use that uh mm. this time of year <laughs> though i will say i woke up this morning and checked my fasting blood sugar and i was like i definitely drank a cringer last night like there is no <laughs> well, that but, is going to counteract yes. some of that yeah just <laughs> <laughs> You could use like a diet. I don't know if they make diet ginger beer. I'm I'm chugging diet ginger ale all the time. Though. Well, like that that sugar style. rim is gonna probably mess with your yeah. sugar, oh, yeah. even if you use a diet <laughs> ginger ale. Yeah. But, okay, if you're needing the sugar rim less for the sweetness and more just for the prettiness, then you can still get it. Still looks really impressive if you just dip part of the glass. Like, yeah. Dip mm-hmm. a corner of the glass into your your juice, your citrus juice, and then dip like that into partial. sugar. So you still just have just a little bit. So it yes. looks pretty again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then you don't you aren't like working your way through like that's my downfall with margaritas is I'm like, oh that salt is so delicious. <laughs> and then so the next day I'm like why do my fingers feel so stiff today? Oh, <laughs> I, 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 I so much salt last night. <laughs> but here's thing. They have neat, like, and I've seen Instagram ads for this, and I'm just fascinated by it. It's like edible glitter that you can put in your drinks now. Like, that's a what? super other fun and festive way to make it fancy without adding, I don't know if there's, I don't know what the sugar content is of, like, drinkable glitter, but... <laughs> It's fascinating and beautiful, but it's sparkly mm-hmm. and sparkly makes everything better. And there's exactly. fun draws and like, yeah, just don't be, you, know. you can have glitter all over your kitchen and not just your craft room. That's <laughs> correct. <laughs> no, that the, the, great good thing, the good thing about this recipe too, is it, it provides a, like a bulk, a way to like make it in a pitcher so that you don't have to make one drink at a time mm-hmm. as well so that's mm-hmm. super helpful especially when it's time to start having parties again mm-hmm. yeah and not all ginger ales slash ginger beers are created equally nope so if you're new to this maybe do a taste testing of them or ask your friends what they like or what's because i like to drink the super like i get the extra ginger reeds ginger <laughs> Beer ale stuff. I don't actually know if it's ginger beer or ginger ale, but it's like it is a kick in the face of yeah. ginger. That might be a bit much if you're using that. I actually mixed that with cranberry juice once and it was, it and was strong. So if, choose wisely. And if you don't want to splurge, because there are like you have really? the super like craft name brand things out there. I got all of my product. I got everything at Aldi. Like they have ginger beer, they mm-hmm. have cr- pure cranberry juice, all of it they have there so it was it felt like less of a risky investment if it turned out that i didn't actually like like what i made but Rather my husband dollar bottle of ginger beer <laughs> right no and also i will say this for people who do like alcohol in their drinks my husband had one last night with a shot of rum and mm. he thought it was delicious oh yeah well i can there tell you, you i've always loved this time of year because it's either Seagram's or Canada Dry, I can't remember which one, comes out with their cranberry ginger ale. And it is the best soda, hands down, that you can have at this time of year. But this sounds like an even more flavorful variation on that theme. And mm-hmm. I would definitely be keen to try it. Yep. It's well, delicious. we made a delightful little gathering 
between the four of our recipes tonight, that drink would be, it would pair beautifully with my little cranberry crackers with cream cheese. Or and garnish the drink with one. Yes. Totally put the, yeah, I'd pop it on a little, a little toothpick and put that on the top of it and it would look beautiful and then we'd enjoy our salad and feel very virtuous even as we are gobbling <laughs> but we're like oh it's so healthy <laughs> <laughs> my body's rejecting it but it's so delicious I have to keep eating it <laughs> And then we can enjoy tasty, tasty cranberry almond cookies for yes. dessert. This is I love it. This has been a very delicious. successful iron ladle challenge. I think we all won. I think so. I think. Yes, we need to. Like, I think the first person to try all four recipes because we haven't tried all four. First person it's to try good. all four is definitely going to be the winner because that's going to be a good mm-hmm. meal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Definitely. I, I'm glad that you romanticize cranberry bogs because they <laughs> terrify the heck out of me. <laughs> well, I didn't know Wisconsin had cranberry bogs. They do. That's oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> terrifying. Did your granddad ever get his cranberry bog? No, no, it oh. remained, it remained a dream. So he is in heaven swimming through the cranberry bogs of of paradise <laughs> yes <laughs> where the bog monsters won't get you and pull you that's right guaranteed. guaranteed i'm terrified i told you what? who even knows what lurks underneath that's true i don't think i'd want to walk through a cranberry exactly bog. what if you have on a wetsuit that would be an odd experience. <laughs> underneath your waders it can't be much worse than swimming in lake michigan though Right outside of Chicago. I wouldn't do that either. Outside that was of Chicago? So, You're that crazy. Was questionable water. Way back when I did triathlon, Ooh. I would open water swim in in Lake Michigan. And That's there were a few good days good. when I just had to like not look around because <laughs> it was a little dicey. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe I would walk through a cranberry bog oh, right yeah. with a wetsuit on. <laughs> That's right. All right, ladies. If you try all four of these recipes in one meal, that would be fantastic. Mm. Some one of you should do this and post it in the Facebook group. We also want to know what your favorite cranberry recipes are because there has to be more than just the four that we showed up with for this so podcast. Many more. So many more. So show us your cranberry recipes. We don't I'm have sure an entree we'll- yet. We need an entree. Right. It's right. true. There are there are missing pieces of this traveling feast of cranberry. So we want to see your recipes. We'll post pictures of what we did. And then, and then we can all tag on on what more we can have with cranberry recipes because everybody needs to have more cranberry in their life during like the six weeks that they're in the store. <laughs> so post all of those pictures in our Facebook group. Find us in the Lutheran Ladies Lounge. Find all of our recipes, recipe episodes, and all the rest of our content from the last year plus of our podcast at kfuo.org slash Lutheran Ladies Lounge or on your favorite podcasting app. You're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm a big fluffy bowl of kale. (laughs) You stole mine, (laughs) Breeze! However, while I'm on the subject, (laughs) kale is super easy to grow in the garden. So if you are just getting into gardening, grow kale it comes up first lives longest survives anything super edible super healthy and i'm rachel (laughs) 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 views and opinions expressed on the lutheran ladies lounge podcast may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of kfuo radio the lutheran church missouri synod The Lutheran Ladies Lounge is produced by KFUO Radio and available at KFUO.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Join our community on Facebook in the Lutheran Ladies Lounge. Rachel's eating food. Kale. Kale salad. (laughs) My name is Rachel and I love kale salad. My name is Sarah and I love cranberries.
My name is Brian. I love Christmas. That's the thing about Kale. You just keep chewing and chewing and chewing. My name is Aaron <laughs> and I like looking angry. <laughs> I was looking angry just then. I was, I was kidding. <laughs> intent. You, know you were looking you. intent. <laughs> you, you know I'm scared of you, right? <laughs> oh.